Hey guys, today I wanted to show you something in Air Tycoon Online 2 uh, related to how I manage to consistently always grow as fast as I do in this game. As you can see, I started um, around a week ago in real life for 7 years in the game at a very low value of around 2 billion and now at the end of this graph, if you're looking at the same graph as me, I'm at 30, mil 30 billion value in just one week. In literally one week, I grew from a brand new company um, to the seventh largest in my world, and I'd like to share with you how I've done it. Now, essentially, I'm going to be going over three concepts, um, all in separate videos, because I figure if I made it into one video, my thoughts would start to get jumbled. Uh, so this is the first one out of three. So the three concepts we're going to be covering is the ratio, the profit ratio of a plane, which is how much money you can make divided by the cost of the plane. Next two things I'll be talking over are stopovers and how the game actually calculates about how many people will want to ride your plane. But today I want to talk about the profit ratio because I believe it's the least understood and most important aspect of this game. So what I've done is I have one minute left uh, is I've downloaded the information of the number one player on my world. Um, I'll show you guys the leaderboards as soon as it loads. Um, so this is the number one guy. Uh, and if we take a look at his routes and sort by profitability, uh, these appear to not be the right person. I don't know what happened. What? Oh, I was in stopovers on me. Uh, so if we look at his routes, his number one most profitable route is making 10k a month as a 747-200 flying from Los Angeles to Cairo. So, all right. So this is his most possible profitable route. So what profitability ratio is, is essentially to understand what the importance of profitability ratio is, you have to understand how value is calculated in this game, assuming you have no airports, um, because airports are bullshit and incredibly overpowered, but cost gems and aren't available to most players like you or me. Um, so how, what is the value of your company? It is basically just simply put the amount of cash you have now added to the amount your airplanes are worth. Now, ideally you'd want all your money to be in airplanes because airplanes make more money than they cost in general. Um, and as they make more money than they cost in their lifetime, they will result in a net value increase. Pretty self-explanatory. Your airplane makes more than how much you bought it for in its life, your value will have had an increase. So certain airplanes have a much easier time making much more than their value and this is where the money made it the co the money made in life divided by cost of airplane ratio or i'm going to call it cost ratio for the rest of this video um comes into play so for example using that 747 i talked about earlier i wrote this down on a sheet of paper and I'll take it with me here it is all right is that 747 was making 10k a month. If we multiply that by the number of turns, it will be in operation, which is 240, because that's the lifespan of, an air of the airplane. And you always do want to use your airplanes to the very last day. Ideally, uh, unless you have some extra money and you can't use it as fast as you're getting it, which um, is unlikely, uh, especially near the beginning of the game. So uh, essentially, two, 10k, per month times 240 months of operation for the plane, uh, which is the standard lifespan of planes in this game again, uh, divided by the cost of a Boeing 747, uh, which if we take a look, the cost of a Boeing 747 um, is 280K. Now for the sake of this calculation, I just use 240K, um, just um, which doesn't affect the result a lot, which means that Boeing 747 in the most ideal situation from the number one player on this server will pay itself off 10 times. In the life of this 747, it will be able to purchase itself 10 more times, pretty much. So if you bought one 747, ran it for the duration, assuming there was no expenses, which we're just gonna do to make life very simple, um, is this 747 will pay itself off 10 times. So you have 10 times the value which you started with. Interesting. So let's look at one of my favorite planes at the beginning of a game. Um, it is quite simply uh, put, <clears throat> just incredibly, incredibly efficient. 
uh, and that is the Tupolev 134. Now, as you can see, I have a lot of Tupolev 134s which aren't running the appropriate amount of schedules um, as many, because I can't simply request slots as fast as I'm using them, um, as I've been trying to expand very quickly, as you can tell, probably. Let's take a, an average Tupolev 134. Um, as you can see, there's lots of them, and the average one makes around 2k, like New York to Halifax, for example. It makes 2k, which doesn't seem lot like a lot, doesn't seem nearly as impressive as the Boeing 747 I showed you guys earlier. But, if we do the exact same calculation, 2k a month times 240 turns of service, um, divided by the 21k cost of the Tupelo 134, I believe, let me just double check that right quick. Yes, the Tupelo 134 is 21k, would result in a 22.85 profit ratio, which means... This dinky little tuple of 134 running on basically any garbage ass route makes 22 and a half times its value back. So if you only ran one tuple of 134 for the entire duration of its life and that was the only plan you had, you'd end up with 22.85 times the value you started with. Which, as you can tell, is a lot more efficient than the 747. And not only that, basically any... any route whatsoever will manage to fill the tuple of 134. Chicago to Kansas City fills the tuple of 134, and that's another one where I don't have the right amount of slots, so it's not making as much money as it could, but even so, I guarantee you that plane is still making more than the Boeing 747. Now, later in the game, this becomes less important because you end up with an amount of money which is too great for you to spend, uh, essentially, like, for example, later on, what I'm making, maybe, uh, I haven't showed you guys my financial report yet, but I will in a second. Right now I'm making 810k a turn. Um, later on, say I'm making uh, 2 billion, uh, or 2 million k a turn. There's basically no way I'll be able to spend my money as fast as I'm getting it. Like, I'll wake up in the morning, uh, 5 turns have passed, for example, and I have 10 million. Like, it'll take me all day to request planes to slowly spend up all that money. Um... And that's the point where bigger planes do become more efficient because they allow you to actually sp spend all your money uh, to do more work for you. But at the beginning of the game, that's definitely not the case. And at the beginning of the game, you want every single one of your dollars to multiply as fast as humanly possible. And that is why small planes like the Tupelo 134 are ideal when you start the game. First of all, as, you, as I showed you earlier, um, with the 10 ratio of the Boeing 747 compared to the 22.85 ratio of the 134, the Tupelo 134 is more than twice as efficient in the early game. Um, and not only that, it's easy to find routes for. And there's even a third benefit of using small airplanes such as the Tupelo 134, the Tupelo 124, basically any very small air efficient aircraft like... Um, not efficient, but small, but efficient for its uh, price. And by the way, guys, th another nut thing about the Tupelo 134 is when you buy them, you can always make sure your seats are as close together as possible so you can have the most seats, and they will still always, always, always fill up. Now, why is this even more additionally well? Uh, it's because the more planes you have, and Tupelo 134s are cheap, the more planes you are allowed to lease, and lease planes in the early game are once again ridiculously efficient. If we take the same concept for lease planes, um, uh, let me. Sh uh, for example, uh, I have a lot of lease seven four sevens. These are all leased, and let's use this route as an example. This route Chengdu to London. I use the ideal situation for the other person's seven four seven, so I'll be fair to my seven four sevens too, and use Chengdu to London. Now, as you can see, I did screw up my classes a bit, and. Uh, Occupation isn't perfect, but my 747-100 makes 8k a turn. This is one half of the stopover, so the other half will say make 7k a turn, I'm not sure. But, oops, what I just did. Um, but this is a lease plane, so let's assume each half is making about this much, so 7.5k each, let's be fair. And this 747 is making 15k a turn. Now this is obviously you have to do the stopover video to make to highlight why stopover routes are essentially 
OP as hell. Um, but my least 747 is making 15k a turn. If you subtract the least cost, which is 4k a month, it's making 11k a turn. Except if we do the profitability ratio, we realize that 11k a turn times 24 months is going to give us a profitability ratio of 11 if it was a regular 747. But as this one is leased and only paid 40k down payment for the lease, the profitability ratio goes to the roof. It's basically six times higher and the profitability ratio is 60. A 747-100 leased has a profitability ratio of 60. Now, the only reason why I don't stack all 747-100s um, leased um, making shitloads of money is as you can see they are decently hard to actually fill up to an ideal state and once you get to this level um, for example uh, Seattle to Copenhagen um, I'm sure actually I do have routes better than these routes which are not uh, on 747s but as you can see it's decently hard to fill a 747 when you're down to 5k for each half of the stopover 10k total uh, 7 what is it? 7, 7. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. When you subtract the down, least down monthly down payment, you get down to 6k a month. It's no longer as lucrative as I said before. And it gets kind of risky as um, it, is decent, it is decently hard to continue to find constant 747-100 routes, which are very good. But anyway... That is basically, in a nutshell, profitability ratio and why it's incredibly important. It allows you, it pretty much, essentially, in order to achieve this, you just need to use smaller airplanes and lease aircraft as leased aircraft as long as they are making good money, um, have the highest potential for profitability ratio. Um, yeah, so basically that's it and once again just to reiterate smaller planes have higher profitability ratio um usually simply because they're smaller and they're easier to fill up completely with minimized seating but also small most of the smaller planes are cheap russian planes and they are just unbeatable in value uh, because the expenses at the beginning of the game are so low um there's no taxes uh, your staff don't cost very much at the beginning of the game. Fuel is cheap at the beginning of the game. Um, and they barely use any fuel at all. And as you can see, for a 72-seat plane, you can't really even get close. Like, a 737 is way bigger and does not manage to fill the same number of routes. Um, is it Fol Folker? Uh, the 65-seat plane costs more than the Tupolev 72-seat uh, plane. And for all these reasons... It tends to be cheap Russian planes, which have the highest profitability ratio, which are the best because they increase value the fastest. Um, what's it called? Leased planes have the potential to have the highest profitability ratio, but as they have the additional expense of a down payment, um, if I can show you guys, lease, um, 747-100, for example, uh, very high down payment, very high lease cost, so ooh, the monthly cost is only 3k. Well, that's better than I thought, um, but it's very risky as it's a lot easier to go into negative profitability ratios or low prop. Not negative, you can't have a negative profitability. Actually, you could if the plane was losing money each month, but um, pretty much it's very easy to have very low profitability ratios with a uh, leased aircraft, but it also has the potential to be the highest in the game, so you just have to be careful and make sure if you do lease any aircraft. Uh, they are making the most possible money because it's actually very, very important. So anyways, that's all I have to say. And that's profitability ratio in a nutshell. Hopefully this guys, this helps you guys' early game. Um, the importance of profitability ratio falls off later in the late game because it's simply about trying to spend all your money. So raw profit numbers do become more important. Uh, compared to just profitability ratio, but for the first 10 years, you really will want to keep that in mind when choosing the kind of aircraft you are buying. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you guys next time.